I'm Henry, and welcome back to part three in our series here at Art of Finance, exploring the application of large language models. Now, not only into the financial advisory process, but also supporting user interactions and journeys throughout our app and product offering. So I'm coming into an existing conversation here where it has some existing key information and attributes as we discussed previously. It knows my net worth, it correctly inferred my accreditation status that then got mapped onto the financial metrics, which as we discussed, can then get derived into this optimal portfolio allocation. And while it's really interesting and exciting to see how we can leverage LLMs across time and how you can have this continual interaction and to see the updates to your portfolio, something I'm really excited about coming from the research side is not just this separate investment advisory process, but also leveraging LLMs to understand your current financial positions and help the user interact with the app and understand the active performance and applications of investment products they already have. And so what I'll try here, and again, active research demo, not open for users, is we have my optimal portfolio, got it, but now I'm an existing RD user. I did some investments and I want to understand their performance. So maybe I can say, hey, you know, what are my current holdings for my Harvest Treasuries portfolio? Great. So you can see I recognize that a Harvest Treasuries uh, existing investment in the background of my user account, and it can correctly pull out my actual allocation across the assets for that investment. So SSO, XLB, XLF, et cetera, et cetera. Great, love it, useful for me, at least on research. I like to see how the allocations change over time. But now I might be interested in how has my portfolio been performing? Great, so it's giving me a temporal performance report across three periods, the day, month, and week. The values are a little outdated, okay, research demo. But you can see for the day, I had a positive return of 1.41, then 1.24 in the month, and the week level has not been so good, 1.32 overall. And again, really important here is this LLM is a way for the user to interact and understand the sometimes uh, complex financial mechanisms that are hidden away in the background of Arda. And at least for me, not coming from finance at all, this is super useful because uh, I didn't have any context of this sort of thing when coming in and starting the research. And so you can see here it's asking about factor level analysis or asset level analysis for these time periods. This might sound interesting. I have the performance. I'd like to understand why. Right. So I'm going to ask it to essentially give me the attribution over the past week because this is my down week. Everything else is up. A little odd, I'd like to at least know why. And also this is really more for myself than anyone else. You can always, you know, prompt the responses. Some people like to dive really in depth to the financial metrics, they have that background. Again, I personally, I'm a doctor of computers, not finance. So explaining it to me like I'm a five-year-old is perfect. We'll let it generate for a second. Think of it like lemonade stance, raining outside, not many people will buy lemonade, fair enough maybe a little too dumbed down for this example. Let's try to explain the factor level attribution and why the weak performance dipped. Great, so we can go into the specific asset and investment level attribution of the performance across time. So top performance from XLV to XLP, and the bottom performers SSO. Surprising, but down week in the market. And then we can go into the actual specific factors, and I'll end with that. Give me the specific factors and why they matter. Again, I don't have much financial context. I'm just trying to explore. A uh, really important bit of this is that it's a user-driven journey. It's not that we're pre-compiling these 15-page investment reports for the user to parse through. It's instead that the user can drive the level of understanding and depth that they'd like to interact with in the app. And I'll go ahead and end it off here. I'm well over time, uh, but thank you again. And the next part of the series, we're gonna dive into some different ways that you can interact with a model and explore the product. And 
we'll start getting into really the nuances that make this interesting and, and differentiable. Thank you.